story this afternoon. Because it's easy to celebrate the girl who manages a large agro enterprise. It's very easy. But there are hidden bats to that glamour. There's an average of 200 million Nigerians. And if each one of us, because people ask me every day, are you crazy? Why did you embark on an agricultural sojourn? I will share why. And I hope that I can distort your sleep a bit because I, I think that we're sleeping too much in Nigeria and in Africa. We spend too much time. I think we have too much time on our hands that we're not utilizing properly and I want us to begin to do a paradigm shift. I don't go to bed early. My auntie is in this room. Many nights she will chase me off and say, go and sleep. I came back to the country last night and I remember her as she was going upstairs. I hope you will sleep because you look fairly well rested but you should be prepared for tomorrow. But I haven't slept a wink since last night. And I'll tell you why I can't sleep. If 200 million Nigerians spend an average of 100 naira per meal, per meal, 200 million of us, and I'm saying basic food, 100 naira is not sufficient to feed anybody today, true or false. But if each one of us spend on the average 100 naira, it means that our Food expenditure daily is 20 billion naira. Rice and beans only. Gary and granite only. Right? It means that at the end of each month, the average, cumulatively, we all spend about 600 billion. Right? On food. I've not said ice cream. I've not said the niceties. I've not said those of us who have brought a palette for luxurious fruits that are imported daily, like grapes, you know, like the English pear, like someone offered me earlier today, or the macadamia nut or the pistachio nut that we don't grow in Nigeria. You know how Nigerians have grown a palette for things they don't produce, but it's a lifestyle of Oh, now we now have a rising middle class. So what did you have for lunch? I had pizza, processed flour. Look, for the girls, we will pack it here after a while. Mm -hmm. Call them what, love handles, right? Okay. But, but on a more serious note, if I can borrow little, the, new tri the newer tribes, because this one's here, are the newer tribe, and they represent the Nigeria of my dream. <laughs> These guys, and I celebrate you for what you've done, and I hope that many more of us can support you with what you're doing, because that is all, that is all we need. And, and this event is about being beyond politics, so let's, let's move away from the things that readily, you know, divide us and separate us. The issues around religion that we spend our time talking about, when we should be working around education. My first, I mean, you've all seen the videos. My first land acquisition took me two years. I leased land for my first farm operation, and the guy that I bought leased the land from was a damn fraud. I have begged, borrowed to run my enterprise. Straight out of college, Greenhorn, I didn't know so much. We didn't have a lot of these conferences back then, so I jumped in. By my 27th birthday, I was heavily indebted. I was exposed, 27 million naira, which was like a million bucks for every year I'd lived. I remember my father saying to me when they came to look for me from the financial institution, ah, but the truth was, irrespective of the numbers that I saw, my father was my father, so I honored him, right? I didn't, show to, I didn't disrespect him. 
And that's something that we're fast losing, our values, our values. The things that shape our humanity as Nigerians and as Africans, we all want to be very Western. Coming back to my story, when I was going to buy the first land, after being swindled a couple of times and after losing money, my girlfriend and I agreed that we, I would start again and we both decided to raise 100,000 Naira each so that I would restart the business because I'd lost it all. I was in debt. The first person that came to my rescue was Dr. Christopher Kolade. I remember walking into his office at the Lagos Business School to say, I needed to talk to him. I just, it was a chance meeting. And I asked him, sir, I have done, I think I have done everything by the books, but I have failed. And he said to me, listening to you, I have no advice. Give me three days, let me seek the Lord's face. And three days later, I went to see him. And you know what he said to me? He said, God said to me, Kolade, Mosumola loves me. Yes, she has failed, but she loves me. And Kolade, she needs help. Kolade, you can help her. I was looking for 100,000 Naira. But guess what? I was sitting in his office having this chat with him when I got a phone call from one of the people I was owing money. And you know when you're owing money and the call comes <laughs> and you're in front of a big man like Dr. Kolade, you'll be very careful, you know. Um, so I was very careful. He said, take the call, dear. Take the call, young lady. <laughs> I looked, I said, Baba, I want to know me. Meaning the people I'm owing are the ones calling. So when I took the call, he said to me, I, I need you to do three things. God said to me that apart from the fact that you love him, you haven't been sleeping. So I need to buy your sleep today. Hmm. I chuckled. You want me to sleep? Okay. 200 million Nigerians. Me, I'm in debt, then I should sleep. So I said, sir, I agree. I would gladly sleep if you want me to. So he said, how much would tonight's sleep be worth? <laughs> I said, <laughs> to sleep. How much? Okay. You know, if someone just looks at me now, I'm looking for 100,000 Naira to restart my business. But if someone gives me, say, half a million Naira, and I can pay one of the people that just called me to buy some more time, and, and, and I have another half a million Naira to play around with, I know what I can do with money in that business. Then he asked me again, how much? I said, sir, one million Naira will sleep. Guess what? He called his bank and said, stop the purchase of that generator. Yes. And I'm sharing this story because I don't know who is in this room. And you think your back is up against the wall and it's over. I'm trying to share with you things that I have been through. Because it's easy to celebrate Pretty Miss Farmer, the glamorous farmer, right? But it didn't happen overnight. I have many nights of tears. I've been called names. I am not married. So imagine what it's like in Nigeria. I remember what Yvonne said. It's so easy for us to judge people, but we don't know what they're going through. Right? So this entrepreneur got a new lease of life. He cut me a check for 1.5 million naira. And he asked me, you would go home now, get a new change of clothes, go to the salon, get your hair done, and look like my daughter. You will go to the spa, and do all those nice things girls do, and go and watch a movie. When you're done seeing the movie, I need you to go home and sleep. And when you wake up tomorrow, we can talk. With a 
check of 1.5 million naira in my hand. Sleep was not hard, though. <laughs> I called my girlfriend. I said, Mops, where are you? She said, I'm in my office. I said, I have 500,000 naira for you now. She said, ah, no, Mops, what have you done? Which of those people have you succumbed to? I said, none. God showed up. He's not late, he's always on time. I'm about to lose it, but he showed up. <laughs> Guess what? That journey started. Today, it's over 10 years since that episode because I'd been in business for about four years. But the last 10 years have been the most phenomenal 10 years of my life. And I'm excited about the next 10 years. Because over the last 10 years, I have birthed all the visions that, I, you know how we all wake up, I don't know if it happens to you, but I probably have like six or 10 journals by my bedside. One journal for a different vision, you know? So I write it down. I write it all down, it's irrespective. And my first land acquisition I bought through a newspaper ad. It was advertised for 18 million naira, that day I probably had 10,000 naira in my bank account. And my staff said, Auntie, you have started again. We don't have money. How are we going to go and negotiate? I said, let's go. Even my Bible says, come by without money. <laughs> we bought it. We drove two hours into Ogun State. We met the man. And you know what he asked me? Why farming? My response to him was, why not farming? There's only one thing man will not, cannot do without after taking in air. We can all choose not to wear new clothes. We can all choose not to build new houses. We can choose not to buy new cars. The ones you bought, Seth, how many can you drive at once? You can only sit in one car seat space at a time. With the 10 cars you parked in your garage, have a rethink, my dear wealthy man and madame, sirs and madame. Because the moment you move from one seat in the owner's corner to the other, your driver in front will ask you, Madam Shewa, all right. <laughs> because that means that um, something... So guess what? That was my response to him. But I didn't go empty-handed. And I remember the same for Dr. Kolade. I went with a cake. It was all I had. So with, for this man, I didn't know him. I went with chicken liver from my farm. I went with some fruits from the shop. And we went. And you know what he said to me? How do you intend paying? He gave me seven years to pay for that property. That was how I bought my first 25 hectares. That's the story of my life. Newspaper ad. So please don't limit yourself. It's an, it was an ordinary newspaper ad. And I bought the newspaper that day. And the advert was there. Now, here's another twist to that story. That day, when I gave him the gizzard and the liver, I didn't know he had a health challenge. The gentleman was battling cancer. He called me that night to say to me, and this is where values come to play. He asked me when I said, I will buy this land, sir. He said, I will give it to you. I said, why would you do this? He said, when you spoke to me on the phone, you said something. You said, daddy. He said, that's what fathers do for their daughters. That night, his first daughter died in England. But he called me the next day to say, I lost one, but I gained another. I didn't have to spend seven years to pay him for the land because he refused that I took another bank loan. He watched me grow this farm, try my hands, lose my money. I got a notification on Facebook by one of the gentlemen who worked with me on that property. When the advert went out, he put a comment on Pastor Boju's wall. And he said he testifies. I don't know if you're in this room, Ayodeji. Thank you for sending that note because I know I, was one of, I am one of the meanest bosses on the face of the earth. 
because I know what I want, and I don't suffer fools gladly. And I know what I've been through, but I, I, I beg for forgiveness. I'm not ashamed to admit when I'm wrong, and I learn from everyone every day. So I bought 25 hectares, my dear, and the journey continued. In Ogun State, where that property was, we had to move out after two years, and I'll tell you why. When we do not educate our people right, our citizens, you know what happens? People find life harbors vacuums, right? So in that community, one of the biggest things they engage in is smuggling. They ride Okada to bring rice through the border because we're close to the Idiroko border. And I would be on the farm with my workers and we would occasionally hear gunshots. And the place became unsafe. So I had to lease property elsewhere, but we still have the farm, thankfully. So it, it wasn't always easy, right? But one of the biggest challenges I faced was finding workforce. By my 30th birthday, I realized that my staff turnover had risen tremendously and I couldn't just retain workers. I was going to Kotonu to hire workers who would work for 10 months and go home on holiday for one month. And I just thought I could no longer, I couldn't continue that trend. So I decided to start an initiative in Nigeria called the Abira Agri Support, Agri Business Support Initiative. Let me interest you. I'm excited to see that even the little work that I have done, there's a new cadre of young people coming into the ag space now and beginning to leverage technology to drive enterprise. I have a few slides, but I, I, I won't want to bore you because there's so much going on in the ag sp space. If you could help me with that slide, the one that said, what do you see? It would help us greatly. Once they try to pull that up for us, I will, I will share some opportunities. Thank you. So the question at the point was, what do you see? For me, I saw opportunities, and, th and this is what the current agricultural sector looks like. And, and, and I want to open our minds to think out of the box. Don't think about me, the farmer, but think about the opportunities that are available in the ag sector, and let's all begin to plug in. Because I couldn't find workforce, I decided to start an advocacy program. And I started training young people to be not just farmers, but to be solution providers across the agricultural value chain. Now, where I have plugged in down there is skilled workforce. That is just one component of the agricultural value chain to tell you the gaps that are missing. So for my, to save my life, I cannot be, a, be an accountant. It's not my strength, it's not my forte, but there's some of you in this room who are skilled accountants. Now, what you all need to begin to think about is, how can we fix our food source? Because to, for a large, to a large extent, we're largely dependent on imports. And that's not something that a country of 200 million people should be living on. Do you agree with me? Now, it's time for us to begin to think out of the box and begin to think about how we will fix Nigeria and ensure that we become food sustainable, all right? food sufficient. Now, think about all the food commodities that we have. I'll go back to that in a bit. But I like to use this to summarize the opportunities because some people will say availability to good seeds in the ag sector is a problem, right? But for me, it's a business opportunity because we have people who can go into research and development. We have people who are biochemists. We have people who are, you know, who will become seed technicians and that's one industry waiting to happen. To a large extent, most of the seeds that we grow and use to produce our food in country is imported, largely. How do we want to sustain that? We grow other economies because we're dependent on their production. And I'm saying from rice seeds to millet to sorghum, we have institutes like IITA and some of our local research institutes who are producing, but it's still not enough. 
So there's a business opportunity there for us to begin to work on. Irrigation, yes, it's an issue because largely our food production in Nigeria is rain-fed. And that's seasonal. But it's time for us to begin to think, how can we work on solutions that will ensure that we have all year round cultivation of most of the crops that we need? The world's population is expected to rise to about 200, um, sorry, to about 9 billion by 2050. Who is going to feed 9 billion people? And the greatest land resource lies in the belly of Africa. So Africa, the world is waiting for us to feed them. Now, I have a beautiful analogy in my mind. Look at the Afri map of Africa. Let's picture it. If you take the map of Africa, the way it is, and try to hold the bulky part and lift it up, what does it bring to mind? Excellent. You're the smartest audience I have ever addressed. Now, guess what? This is the coolest part for me. When you want to fire a gun, what do you do? Where is Nigeria situated? What does that say to you? So Nigeria, we are the trigger that the continent is waiting for. So it's time for us as Nigerians to wake up. I said, I want to distort your sleep. So beyond the 200 million people that need to be fed and earn your own share of the 60 bi 600 billion food, basic food consumption revenue monthly, it's time for us to begin to think about how do we ship food beyond Nigeria? How do we ship resources beyond Nigeria? How do we ensure that this continent is fed and that the world is fed as well? That's what I have come to do today. It's, I can talk about my challenges, but I want to trigger something in you that we need to wake up. Let the sleeping giant called Nigeria wake up and rise to the occasion and truly become the giant on the continent. Let's not just be, not be a statistic in terms of population, um, a, gi a giant by population. Let's be a giant by the impact we create. Nigeria sits on over 80, 80 million um, hectares of arable land. What are we doing with it? Nigeria is the only country on this continent that I know that every state has comparative advantage of so many crops. What are we doing? So when Pretty Miss Farmer says that I can't sleep more than three, four hours, those are the kind of things that keep me awake. And I hope I can distort your sleep a bit. Because when I see young people sit on social media and ask me why I don't have that many posts, I simply say I don't make a dime on that street. So I'm not going to live there. Right? It's exciting. Technology is important because we will leverage it. But it should, you see, we need to begin to think how much money, for every time you log on to the internet, how much money do you make? How much value have you added to humanity? How much value have we added to humanity? The agricultural sector, let's go back to that slide because I need, I need that slide to help guide our thoughts. Access to disease pest and weed control techniques. Somebody needs to be solving the problem. Last year and early this year, we had the Tuta Absoluta Challenge. That's the one they call the Ebola virus for tomatoes, right? Now, an average basket of tomato between Kaduna, um, Kano, and Abuja, farm gate, would usually be between 400 to 800 naira, right? Farm gate. But by the time it lands in Lagos, sometimes we're paying between 4,000 and 25,000 in some months. Women, do you agree? Good. Now, it's time for us to begin to think about bridging that gap. How do we move from 400 Naira to 25,000 Naira in Lagos? What happened? A lot of things happened. Now, for those to, that, that basket, that singular basket to move down south, logistics, 
So I'm back to logistics infrastructure. Okay? Yes, access to finance is always going to be a need in the industry or in the sector. All right? But we need to begin to think of storage facilities. All right? That's a business opportunity. Who moves the tomatoes? Who moves the produce, the beans, the maize? Who moves them down? Somebody's providing that logistic service. It's a business opportunity. And young people, how many of you can drive in this room? If you can drive, please stand up. Can drive a car. Please stand up. Please, 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 you mommy. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm coming. Thank you. Please sit down. <laughs> I'm coming somewhere now. Access to mechanization and technology. Do you know that for a country with eight, 80 million square hectares of arable land, our tractor population is not up to 30,000? Now, young people, you can drive, eh? I drive too. Please show us that picture of me on my tractor. Mm, don't forget, don't mind all this one. This one is for platform. <laughs> the real deal is that girl right there. Okay? Now, for every tractor that is imported into this country, it would require an operator. For every tractor that is going to be utilized on a farm, it would require a mechanic. Now, we talk about over 22 million of our young people, youth being unemployed. Now, how about some of us doing a skills conversion program through, through the Abira Agribusiness Support and initiatives like the school, slum to school, right? and begin to get training on how to drive a tractor because my average tractor operator earns 50,000 naira a month, minimum, just for being on the payroll. But when they have to go to places like Kaduna and work out of station, they earn some additional allowance during peak season. Now, guess what? We, I, personally, between myself and my company, I own six of this, right? Now, every state, in this country would require a minimum of 1,000 to 5,000 tractors to work the land. So when people tell me I'm unemployed, look, me, I am done. I want to help people, right? But I can't work hard for people to just come and be begging me for my money. So it's time for us to become tractor mechanics and tractor operators and begin to find the requisite skills and fill the gaps. Enough is truly enough. I'm sorry if I'm now being hard, but it hurts me, okay, to have to go and hire an operator from Kotonu. Again, we are moving our, exporting our revenue. When we have tons of unemployed youths in the country. So it's time for us to start thinking out of the box. So I have shared with you opportunities around logistics infrastructure and, uh, and logistics service provision. But I'm also sharing with you the hidden opportunities that we don't even think about because some of us genuinely do not know. And our school curricula does not educate us enough to expose us to those things. Right? So let's begin to think about being tractor mechanics. Let's begin to think around being service providers. Let's begin, look, every farmer, let the farmers be farmers. Imagine that you're an accounts graduate and you provide SME solution to small farmers in the country, and you charge each farmer in your community 2,500 naira to help them keep their books straight so that they can go to the bank and be bankable and they can access credit from the financial institutions, which is the biggest challenge farmers have. Many of them, the average age of a farmer in Nigeria today is 55 years old. People retire into agriculture and do not pursue agriculture or agribusiness as a career. But I dare say that I'm excited about the, type, the, the, the new crop of young people that are emerging. The guys that founded Farm Crowdy, they make me jump every day with joy. My heart leaps for joy every day. I think about the fact that they have brought technology to meet agriculture and they're bridging that divide. I want to see more Farm Crowdies. I want to see more Adal Sakwes. Who will get up and say that she wants to make nice, fresh home meals, because lifestyles are changing. People are now become a lot more aware. 
about their health needs. So we have a lot of juice bars popping up. But guess what? It's not sufficient to just make juices. You need to take it one notch higher because in Nigeria, the whole world is talking about the fourth industrial revolution. We haven't even crossed the second industrial revolution. Are we together? So those are the things that keep me awake. So today, my role is twofold. On one point, to try and humor you, you know, massage your egos to begin to think about agriculture as being cool. Because guess what? Those farmers in your village are not the definition of agriculture. This is what farmers look like these days. Thank you, I feel it, I feel it. Thank you, sister. Cool, sassy, educated, going somewhere to happen. That's what farmers should look like. And guess what? Imagine that today it's Mosumola or Moro. Tomorrow it's you, the accountant, an engineer. All you need to do, you have the basic knowledge of engineering. We're talking logistics, right? For every produce, that is fresh produce in Nigeria. We need cold storage, refrigerated trucks to move them from the farm to the market. Who is going to build those refers? Who is going to maintain those refers? So it's time for you. You have a basic engineering knowledge. Four years in the university. Do a skills conversion, six months, one year. Max, um, tops. And you know how to manage those equipment. That's what my 